What's up YouTube? This is Cooking with Doug and what you see here is an unboxing of my brand new Ninja Foodie Smart XL Grill. This one automatically comes with the Foodie Smart Thermometer. Alright guys, let's get it open. Before we open it, let's take a look at the previous model. Right here. This is the one with the griddle guys, so just spoiler alert, this new one does not have a griddle and I, that's, that's perfectly fine with me. Ninja, if you're listening, make a standalone griddle. We'd love to have it. Here it is, guys. What I love about this machine so far, it's the least intimidating Ninja grill that I've seen. And I've, I think I've had all of them. I believe this is the fourth edition. And look at that. You got your button, your physical buttons right there. It's just simple and to the point. It's still sexy. It's lightweight. I like it. I mean, if someone's getting into the Ninja Grill scene, never had a Ninja Grill before, I would definitely recommend this one. For sure. Like I said, it's the least intimidating. It has a sleek look to it. Yeah, absolutely. And right there is where the th thermometer is, and we'll take a look at that in a second. These are your buttons. I don't know if you caught it in the beginning, but this machine, just for you uh, stat nerds, this is over 1,700 watts, so 1,760 to be exact. This is about 27 pounds, so um, pretty lightweight from, uh, for this type of machine and plenty of power. So let's open it up. All right, so let's open it up. And this is what you get when you open it up. This part does not come out. And again, this doesn't have a griddle like last year's uh, model, so it does not heat up from the bottom. The air just circulates, just like all the other ones besides last year. So that's what it looks like there. All right, guys. So first, we put in our cooking pot. This. Now, once this is in, many of you know, but again, to the people that just seen this machine for the first time, once this part is in, you can either put in your grill plate or your air fryer basket. Or you can cook from here directly. I, I love doing that, by the way. But let's get those pieces out. So first I'll show you the air fryer crisper basket, goes in just like that, no problem closing. See? So when you want to air fry, you can use this. I personally don't. I would just lay it out here and air fry it. But you may do damage uh, potentially. I mean this is a good finish, but like let's say if you weren't using the right um, tools like a silicone utensil suppose you use metal or something like that you may scratch that so whereas this this could more or less take a better beating but you get more area if you just put your stuff you want to air fry right there and if you've seen any of my previous videos did just fine just using this but anyway this is your grill plate and you want to grill Put it right there. These give you your grill marks. This went back to the traditional Ninja grill plate. Uh, all other Ninja um, grills besides last year have a plate that looks like this. This is the difference between the two plates, the styles. And you're not losing much real estate there anyway. So you're good to go for those who might be wondering and this is where all the heat comes from and this is the top of the machine by the way ha uh, you have your air fryer coil and you have that little mesh metal mesh thingy to cover it 
for the splatter and all that good stuff. Um, it's easy to take off and clean. Um, and all the Ninja Grills look like this anyway, so this is nothing new. But for those checking this grill out for the first time, I wanted to show you specifically. Let's check out the plug. You got a three prong. So by the way, guys, I picked this up at Best Buy, surprisingly, at for two seventy nine. Um, the previous model is still going for three forty nine with the griddle, but I think a lot of people will be more attracted to this price, and um, I, I just don't feel that this machine needs the griddle because you, it could use the griddle, but it doesn't have a large large enough space for a griddle. When you know, when I think of griddle. I think of you're doing at least four or five pancakes at a time. If you're not doing that, then it's not worth talking about. So this is not a, a large enough space to really do that. So that's why I was saying earlier that if Ninja made a standalone griddle that could do that, you know, maybe a ceramic finish, that would be absolutely fantastic. But this price point and the sleek look and the unintimidating buttons here, I think Ninja did a great job of putting this together. I think when the people go to Kohl's and Walmart and they see this, they say, yes, I'm not intimidated. I think I could work this. That's, that's what it gives off to me. Let's go ahead and plug it in for the first time. All right, got it plugged in. This is the power. There we go. So there's no noise when you, wow, okay. So when you hit power, it, um, when you turn it on, it has no noise, but when you turn it off, it has a, a little jingle. Okay. And before I forget to mention, as always, uh, with Ninja products, you're going to get a recipe book. This particular one has 15 recipes for you to start. That's absolutely fantastic. And of course, your manual safety tips and all that stuff. You know, don't bring this in the shower with you, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, I love this. The quick start guide. This is for people that just want to pick up a machine and get going as fast as possible. And I'm not the type to rummage through a, man, a big thick manual. I like little sheets like this. All right, this is how I turn on. This is what I have to press to get it going. Boom. Done. And this is the type of little guide I like. So this has a little thermometer, little tutorial right there. What's inside here? Ninja Beef Doneness. Oh, that's cool. And then back here you have uh, some, you know, times of uh, stuff that people would generally make right away. Cool little quick start cheat sheet. Guys, we're not going to waste any time. After I go over these buttons, I'm going right to cooking. So you see that skip there? Maybe that's skip preheat, I'm assuming. I don't know. We'll see. So you got grill, you got air crisp, you got roast, bake, broil, dehydrate. Start and stop. Got your thermometer and you got your up and down. I'm assuming for the times and temps right there. And that's it. Cool. But my unboxing is done. Let's cook something. All right, let's go ahead and break this machine in real quick. We're going to make a quick snack for AJ before his football practice. This is going to be an after-lunch snack. We got our Sam's Club chicken bites, which, by the way, shame on Sam's, Sam's Club because this bag is $20, $19.99 now. Before the pandemic, this three-pound bag, which is still three pounds, was $9.99. Shame, shame, shame. Like I said, normally when I air fry, I don't use this crisper basket thing, but for this run, I'm going to do it. I'll be good and do it. I know Ninja be like, why don't you use what we say? <laughs> That's the last of what I had in that bag, and I got some Aldi crinkle fries. I'll go with it. Right. Spread that out. Try and do it one layer. And the good thing about this bat, this crisper basket, we could take it out and shake it, you know, because we're going to have to rotate it halfway, right? And like I said, guys, this is just a warm-up. We're going to get a little serious after this. All right, power. 
I want it air crisp, which basically is air fry. Let's see how high it goes. So it goes to 450. We're gonna we're gonna do yeah. Well, let's do 450. I'm gonna do eight minutes, and I want to bypass preheating. So let's see if we can do that. Well, I know we can do that. Let's just see how. So we're gonna hit start. It says pre. If I hit this. Add food, open the lid, close, and bam. All right, we'll be back in uh, four minutes because we have to uh, rotate or shake. Now, by the way, if I wanted to change the time, I could change it just on the fly, no, no problem at all. But anywho, let's open up, see what we got. Yep, that looks about right. All right, guys, we got them back in. I'll be back in four minutes. This is definitely not quiet, but I would say this is not louder than any of the other Ninja Grills that I've worked on. So, yeah. Let's see how it sounds when it's done. Yep, just like normal. No problem. And this is the final product. I bet probably most of you want to see a steak, but that'll be another video. Today we're not going to be cliche, and we're going to make a chicken breast. Because that also will produce great grill marks for you to see as well. So after we season this up guys, we're going to whip out the grill plate, we're going to whip out the thermometer included, hook that up and get that going and show you guys how to work that. So as I showed you before, this is where you put the thermometer and this is where you insert it at. And this is on the right side of the machine. You just pop this out and unravel it. Looks like this. All right, let's season this up. I'm gonna put some avocado oil from my Evo oil sprayer. Uh, olive oil is fine as well. Put some of my go-to on there, which is pink salt, black pepper, and garlic. Link will be in the description for the sprayer and this as well. Both must-haves. Some smoked paprika. And one of my new favorite seasonings is this cilantro lime I'm gonna to add to it. So I'm going to let this sit for about 30 minutes, but of course for maximum flavor, you'd want to at least do two hours to six hours to really overnight. But you know, purpose of this video, we'll do 30 minutes. That will lock in some flavor for sure. So when you're using the meat thermometer, guys, you hit grill and you hit this thermometer and you have another whole new menu here. You got beef, but you also have chicken. You also have pork and fish. So once you're using the meat thermometer and you have it in there and you, you program this in, you're not worried about times and temps. When it knows the, the temperature of medium well or medium rare or whatever. And once it gets there, it'll tell you, where to, it'll tell you when to flip and, and it'll just shut off when it's done. So it's complete guided cooking for you which that's awesome but this is you know when you're using the meat thermometer so let's go over what our uh, options are here so I don't know if you can see but it says rare right here so if I go up and this is beef so this is steak right so medium rare medium medium well and well and then if we want to change you go to chicken and it just goes to, it's just well, right? Because <laughs> you don't want rare. Right? <laughs> and pork, you got medium rare, you got medium, medium well, and well. And fish is, well, medium rare, medium, medium well, well. Okay. Anywho, we got our cheat sheet out. Didn't want to whip out the manual. Because I know it has charts in there. But... See right here it says boneless chicken breast. You go on high preset to chicken. 
and that's it. It even shows you how to do it from frozen, uh, medium, uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Cool. All right, guys. I'm gonna put in my grill plate. Boom. Close it down. And now I am going. And I'll turn it off and turn it on so we could start fresh. All right. I'm gonna hit grill. I have my meat thermometer already hooked up. I'm gonna hit the thermometer. I'm going to change it to chicken. That's only at well, so the only thing left to do is hit start. And that's going to preheat. And when and while that's, you know, preheating, I'm going to go ahead and put the, the meat thermometer in my uh, chicken breast. And when it's going to tell me to insert the food when it's done preheating. And again, it's going to tell me when to flip it because we're going to have to flip it as well. It's going to alert me to flip it as well, which is awesome. Like I said, complete guided cooking when you're using the thermometer. No, not much thinking at all. All right guys, we're almost preheated. All right, we're all preheated. Now it's asking me to add my food. So let's go ahead and do that. This grill plate, be careful guys, it's going to be piping hot. You're going to hear a sizzle in a second. All right, you ready? Boom. Now we just close it. See that guys? Target temp is 170, but current temp is 36. See? Oh, you guided cooking. It smells absolutely fantastic already, guys. Still going. And remember, it's going to ask me to flip it. It'll make a chime noise, so like you don't have to be standing over it. But you do would you would have to listen out for it, though, right? There it goes. Asking me to flip. Let's open it up. Ooh, look at that. That's looking good. That's looking good already. Look at that, guys. Okay, like that. That's fine. Alright, close it. Great. Let me give you a better look. See those marks, right? Yep. And remember, guys. This guided cooking could be with your, not, not just this chicken breast, your steaks, your fish, pork chops. Come on now. This could be you. Link will be in the description. There is no visible smoke coming out of this machine. But right there is where the air comes out, but I don't see any visible smoke that would you know, trigger my smoke detector, etc. Or I don't smell it any either. By the way, guys, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. It's free. You know, it's almost the end of summer. <laughs> and you guys know I'm about to go into overtime after the chicken breast is done. Almost there guys, 167. Target temp is 170. Get food. So we are done. Let's see what we're working with guys. Look at that. Come on now. You hear that? Let it run for the people in the back. Smells fantastic, guys. Even instructing me to rest the chicken breast. So I'm going to take it off and put it on the plate and just let it sit for a while.
All right. Not so bad. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, this comes with a brush. So this can get in there and get all that stuff out. You can put this in the dishwasher. You can hand wash it. All good. Just this plate, of course. This plate and the, uh, the plate under it. Dishwasher safe. And of course the air fryer crisper plate as well. Alright guys, let's go into overtime. Turn it on, air crisp. I'm doing 450, I'm doing... Uh, I'll do 10 minutes, but I might cut it short. I am actually going to preheat, that's fine. These are my green beans guys. I season them with my go-to seasoning, pink salt, black pepper, garlic. Couldn't find my low sodium sauce, so I, do, I, I whipped out the low sodium teriyaki. That would be just fine. And for added bonus, I did add some liquid smoke to it as well. All right, let's add some food here. So it's preheated, and it'll stay at add food until you actually add the food. Well, at least for five minutes or longer. Because I've had it sitting there for like three minutes. For that, I add my onions. No metal utensils, guys. Just please, don't do that. Alright. I'm going to let this cook down. I don't know. Check it in five minutes and see how we're looking. All right, guys, I cut it short two minutes, and we are done. And I am ready to eat, guys. This is smelling good, looking good. Paper towel time. Shout out to my viewers and subscribers that hit the like button way before my video is even finished. I appreciate that. Random dinner. Just took what I had out the freezer alongside the chicken breast I got from my meat market and bam. I shot to all my low carbers one time. This could be you. Alright guys, you saw the paper towel go up. That means it's time to eat. This is my early dinner guys. Well not too early, it's 6 o'clock. I usually eat like around 7. You first. You got it? Mm. That's good. All kinds of flavors, guys. All kinds of flavors. You got it? Chicken breast is moist, flavorful. What else got there? Back to the unboxing, guys. I just hand washed all the parts, and like I said, I could have threw it in the dishwasher. But I just wanted to show you I can hand wash them with ease and um, no problems. Use the brush to clean the grill plate. You could use a sponge too, or in the back of the sponge as well. Um, but the brush makes it super easy. And the key with this, guys, is you want to wait like maybe 20, 30 minutes, you know, let it cool off and clean it right away. Don't wait till, you know, the next day or the next week. Because the longer you wait that way, is the harder it will be to clean. But you still can clean it either way, but why well, make it hard on yourself? Because, you know, you got to get all in here and stuff like that. But you see, I clean it. No problem. No worries. This air fryer crisper is going to go under my cabinet because me personally, I don't use it. I'm not telling you not to use it. I just don't use it because like I said, this version um, of the Ninja Grill is very similar to the 2019 and 20 um, 
versions. Now, the 21, like I said, is a little different, but the other versions are very similar to this, so I'm, I'm very familiar with it, and I didn't use the CRISPR basket then, and nothing's going to change now. Let's go ahead and put back the thermometer. Just clicks right in, no problem. All right, so you can see a little usage right here. Um, I used it three times, right? I did AJ's after lunch snack. I did the uh, chicken breast, grilled that. And then I did the veggies. Okay, yeah, three times. So yeah, you could just detach that, you know, throw it in a dishwasher or I would soak it into maybe some degreaser or whatever have you. Follow your manual and they'll show, and there's videos on how to clean this. Cause like I said previously, this is very similar to previous models. Just follow that. I'm not doing a cleaning video because by the time this is ready to be clean, I'd either give it away to one of you guys or I'd be getting the newer one. Um, and maybe giving it to a family member. I don't know. So you won't be getting that video from me. But they're already out there. So you just search for it. Ninja Grill Clean. And you will get it. Alright. What is the verdict? So first off, I love this machine. So some of you asked, and should I upgrade to this if you already have a Ninja Grill? So if you have the first Ninja Grill, which was like a square Ninja Grill. That was the, the square one. Um, yeah, this would be an upgrade for you. Absolutely. But if you have any of the other ones, the 2020 that looks very similar to this, or the 21 that I showed you um, earlier with the griddle, no, this is not, this is not an upgrade for you. It's very, almost identical to the 2020. It just looks a little different. It has these buttons down there, but like this part is very similar. If you look quick, you would think it's that one. Um, but what I like about this, this will be easier for people just getting into indoor grills. Because let's face it, there's not a lot of great choices for indoor grills. You have the George Foreman still <laughs> and uh, some other ones. But um, this, is, this is a great choice because people still want to grill indoors. And as you can see, you can do that with this. Is it better than outside grilling? No, but this will do the job if it's raining, if it's thundering, if it's too cold, if it's too hot, bam. Um, if you don't have a backyard, if you don't, you know, whatever have you, this, this can do it. You do burgers, hot dogs, anything you can grill, you can grill here and get those grill marks and great taste. So like I said, link will be in the description. Go ahead and pick this up. Um, like I said, I like this machine and I would recommend it to anybody mentioning anything about indoor grilling. I would definitely recommend this particular model for them because I feel this model will give you the best chance to just jump right in and just have fun with it.